living species on our planet has the ability to reproduce. After all, it is the process of reproduction that gives rise to the next generation of organisms within every species. And if reproduction were to stop, that species would eventually go extinct on our planet. In this video, we are going to explore the idea of reproduction. And in order to do that, we first need some organisms. Take a look around your environment right now and make a list of every living thing you see. You can also factor in some of the tiny organisms that you can't see with the naked eye, but you know are most likely there. If you are currently inside a building, you can record some of the living organisms that you would find outside in the immediate area. Pause the video now to record your answers. Resume when ready. Nice work. You now have a list of all the living things around you. Now what we are going to do is think about each organism in terms of reproduction, because the truth is not every organism reproduces the same way. Take a flowering plant and a bacteria as an example, which may have been organisms found on your list. Flowering plants reproduce by creating seeds through the process of pollination. Bacteria, on the other hand, reproduce by growing, copying their internal components, and then splitting in two. Take a look at the list of organisms that you created. Think about how each organism is able to reproduce, and if you think two organisms reproduce in a similar way, connect them with a line. Take a few minutes to think and make your connections on your paper. Pause the video now to record your answers. Resume when ready. The amazing thing about life on our planet is that there are many similarities and patterns between organisms that are interesting to study and how organisms reproduce happens to be one of them. When we look at how organisms generally reproduce, we can split it up into two categories, sexual reproduction and asexual reproduction. Let's talk about how each one works. Sexual reproduction occurs when two organisms or sets of genetic material combine to make an offspring. A great example of this is in flowering plants. Most flowering plants have both male and female reproductive parts. The male sex organ of the plant is called the stamen, which contains pollen, which is a structure that carries DNA for reproduction. In the process of pollination, insects or other organisms move along the flower and come in contact with the stamen. In doing so, they can pick up some pollen that sticks to their body. When they move over to the next flowering plant, they could, by chance, drop some of that pollen onto the female reproductive part called the pistil. This can then move the genetic material from the pollen into the ovary of the plant, which contains another set of DNA within their ovules or eggs. If these two sets of genetic material come together, a seed will begin to develop. And with a seed planted in the ground, this new offspring can grow. This is an example of sexual reproduction because the two sets of genetic material, one from the pollen and one from the ovule, combine to create offspring, which is the seed. The idea here is that by combining two sets of DNA together from two different organisms, the offspring will have a new combination of DNA, making it different from either parent with its own unique set of traits. It is not an exact clone of either parent, it is a unique combination of the two. Asexual reproduction is a bit different. Within this process, an offspring is created by a single parent. During asexual reproduction, only one parent passes on its genetic material, not two parents. A great example of this is seen with bacterial cells. When a bacterial cell goes to reproduce, it replicates its genetic material, or DNA, making an exact copy. From there, the cell splits into two, with each new cell receiving one copy of the replicated DNA. This makes an offspring that is identical to the original parent cell. The identical cells are called clones. This process for bacteria reproduction is called binary fission. And again, this is classified as asexual reproduction because the process takes place with genetic material from only one parent. There are different types of asexual reproduction, but the main idea is that only one parent is passing down genetic material to the offspring. So we now know there are two categories of reproduction, sexual and asexual. Let's try to put our new knowledge to the test. Revisit your answers to the previous section and label each organism on your list based on how you think they reproduce. 
For organisms that reproduce sexually, draw an oval around them. For organisms that reproduce asexually, draw a rectangle around the name. Pause the video now to update your answers. Resume when ready. Let's expand our thinking and look at another species, honeybees. Honeybees are social insects that live and work together in a hive. There are three different types of honeybees that are found in a hive. Workers, drones, and the queen bee. And each type of bee has a specific role within the hive. Worker bees are sexually underdeveloped females, which means they are not capable of reproducing. They are responsible for gathering food, maintaining the hive, and caring for the queen bee. This keeps the hive clean and functional and ensures that all the bees are fed. Drones are male bees that will leave the hive once they are sexually mature. Drones usually stay in the hive until they are eight days old. After that, they leave the hive daily looking for a queen bee from a different hive to mate with. Drones are large and eat three times as much food as worker bees. And for that reason, if there are too many drones in one hive, it can strain the colony's food supply. Once colder weather comes and food becomes more scarce, Drones are usually forced from their hive and left to starve. Each hive has only one queen bee at a time. The queen bee is the only female in the hive capable of reproduction. The role of the queen bee is to lay eggs and keep the hive populated with worker bees and drones. Queen bees lay most of their eggs in the spring and summer and are capable of laying up to 25,000 eggs each year. Queen bees are typically able to produce offspring for two or three years. About a week after birth, the queen bee starts leaving the hive to mate with male drones from other hives. She typically will travel several miles looking for a mate to avoid mating with drones from her own hive. During each mating flight, the queen will typically mate with seven to 15 different male drones. After the mating flight is complete, the queen will return to the hive and begin laying eggs. Some of these eggs will develop into female worker bees, and some eggs will develop into male drones. An interesting thing about these three types of honeybees is that they share some similarities and some differences within their DNA. Let's take a look at the karyotypes of these three different bees. A karyotype is a picture of an organism's DNA. Each line on the karyotype is called a chromosome which is a long strand of coiled up DNA. Take some time to identify and record the similarities and differences between the three karyotypes. Pause the video now to write your answers. Resume when ready. On the karyotypes, you'll notice that several different genes or portions of the chromosomes have been labeled. Each gene has anywhere from three to six alleles. Alleles are different versions of a gene found at the same location. Each letter represents an allele or different DNA sequence that can be found at that specific chromosome location. Let's start by zooming in on gene one on the queen bee's karyotype. Gene one is found near the top of chromosome one. The queen bee has two different alleles for gene one, the A allele and the C allele. This means that the DNA for this gene is different at this particular location. Now, let's look at gene three, which is found on chromosome number seven. The queen bee has two identical alleles for this gene because both copies of her chromosome seven contain the K allele. This means that the DNA sequence is identical at this particular part of the chromosome. On your handout, you will see the alleles for a male drone, a queen bee, and six different offspring that have been produced after mating. Let's use different colors to determine how each offspring inherited its alleles. Let's look at offspring number one, which is a female. For gene number one, this female inherited an A allele on one copy of chromosome one and C on the other copy of chromosome number one. This means that the DNA sequence at the location is different between these chromosomes. Now, let's see if we can figure out how offspring number one inherited these chromosomes. For gene number one, this female offspring has the alleles A and C. Looking at the alleles of the parents, only parent one, the queen bee, has the A allele. This means that offspring number one must have inherited the A allele from her mother. 
I'm going to color code the A allele pink to indicate that it was inherited from the mother. Since the A allele was inherited from the mother, the C allele must have been inherited from parent two, the male drone. I'm going to color code the C allele blue to indicate that it was inherited from the bee's father. Let's look at another example together. Offspring number four, a male drone, has the C allele for gene number one. Pause the video and answer the following question. Why do male drones only have one allele for each gene? Use evidence from the karyotypes to support your claim. Resume when ready. Looking at the parent's alleles, both parent one and parent two have the C allele. Therefore, it is impossible to tell for sure which parent offspring number four inherited the C allele from. I'm gonna color code the C allele green to represent the fact that this allele could have been inherited from the bee's mother or father, as we do not have enough information to tell. Pause the video and color code the remaining gene one alleles for all of the remaining offspring. Resume when ready. Let's see how you did. For gene one, all of the female offspring must have inherited the A allele from their mother and the C allele from their father, since the mother is the only parent with the A allele. The remaining male offspring, offspring number five and number six, must have also inherited the A allele from their mother, since the father does not have an A allele to pass on to his offspring. Pause the video and color code the alleles for the remaining genes. Resume when ready. Once your alleles are all color coded, use them to answer the following questions. A student claims that female worker bees are produced sexually and receive half of their DNA from their mother and half from their father. Do you agree with this statement? Support your answer with evidence and reasoning. A student claims that male drones are produced asexually and receive all of their DNA from their mother. Do you agree with this statement? Support your answer with evidence and reasoning. Does asexual reproduction always produce clones or genetically identical individuals? What is your evidence? In this video, we explore different types of reproduction that organisms undergo to create offspring. Consider thinking about and answering these final questions as you continue your learning. Question number one. In this video, we discussed how there are two main types of reproduction, sexual reproduction and asexual reproduction. Are the bees more like the flowering plants that reproduce sexually or the bacteria that reproduce asexually? Support your claim with evidence and reasoning. Question number two. Based on what you learned in part three, does it make sense to only have two categories to classify all the ways organisms reproduce? Explain. Question number three, brainstorm some advantages and disadvantages of reproducing sexually. Brainstorm some advantages and disadvantages of reproducing asexually. What type of reproduction do humans use? Do you think the same advantages and disadvantages apply to us? Explain. Question four, the female bees in this activity inherited half of their DNA from their mother and half from their father. How do you think it's possible for an organism to pass down half of its DNA? Thanks for taking the time to explore concepts in biology with us. We'll see you next time.